And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for July 28th. As expected, Hurricane Douglas has started rapidly weakening and we don't believe it's a hurricane anymore. National Hurricane Center will update shortly after this bulletin goes out. Elsewhere, no systems active right now. It's day 210 of the year so far. In the Atlantic, there's an 80% chance for Invest 92L, which I think has been publicized quite well so far. On day 58 of Atlantic hurricane season could be a threat to the Lesser Antilles and the Greater Antilles. In the, West, in the Eastern Pacific, day 75 of hurricane season with Tropical Storm Douglas moving away from the Hawaiian Islands and a 20% chance for another tropical cyclone in the Eastern Pacific, it would probably be short-lived. In the Western Pacific, there's a clutter of yellow here, 30% out at sea over there, it could be a short spin up there as well, um, and near the Philippines we could have a significant tropical cyclone in the next week, but things remain pretty uncertain. In the North Indian Ocean, another 10% chance for uh, the Bay of Bengal over the next few days, but anything that would form would be very weak indeed. Well, everyone probably wants to know about Invest 92L, so that's the highlight that we've gone with today. 30 mile an hour winds, a pressure of 1,008 millibars. It's 792 miles east of Barbados and a CDPS stage 1 at this time. It is expected to move towards the west-northwest, and this is our current forecast. It could change rapidly because uh, systems that haven't developed are notoriously subject to change on the forecast. But we're calling for a tropical storm that won't last that long, as you can see, weakening to a depression as it moves through the Bahamas. Its long-term forecast is very uncertain. All we can tell you at the minute is that it's very, very large. Look at the size of the circulation of this uh, potential tropical cyclone. It's enormous, more fitting for the Western Pacific. But right now, there it is, uh, circling its way towards the... Uh, uh, Lesser Antilles, the ECMWF model thinks that it will go straight through into the Caribbean Sea. The uh, Gulf of Mexico there, a few thunderstorms blowing up off the coast of Texas, which probably not needed right now. In the eastern Pacific, you can see Douglas, it's really starting to struggle on that satellite imagery there. It's now got a center of, uh, an exposed center of circulation, and the Hawaiian Islands won't really be fe feeling anything in relation to that storm anymore. It's continuing to move towards the west, uh, almost due west actually, at 20 miles an hour, and could still reach the dateline as a fully functioning tropical storm. In the Western Pacific, you can see that things are starting to get a little bit more active. A lot of uh, thunderstorm activities and patterns there, particularly around the Philippines. That's a broad, low pressure area that we could see development of in the next five days. GFS model, last I saw, wants it to stall over Shanghai, but I wouldn't put much uh, focus onto that just yet. The South Pacific is pretty quiet. Uh, a few blow ups here, uh, but generally the typical winter pattern. Um, and in the North Indian Ocean, you can see that Gaia down there towards the uh, southern part of the Bay of Bengal in the equa equatorial region, and that could develop into something, but probably not. Sea surface temperatures right now. Um, maybe you can see where Douglas has taken a little chunk out uh, east of the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, but near the uh, coast of Mexico, still fairly warm waters, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius, perhaps more. The Atlantic, very warm in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the northern areas have cooled down a little bit in the wake of Hannah. Um, and the Gulf Stream, look how warm that is, 30 degrees in several areas off the Carolinas, which is very fascinating to see, and off Cuba. Um, the Indian Ocean, fairly warm as well in the Bay of Bengal, uh, 30 degrees roughly, um, although any development as stated would be fairly inhibited and in the western pacific you've still got that very large swath of uh, very warm sea surface temperatures the south china sea and the philippine sea are ready to go 30 degrees plus 32 degrees even off the coast of hainan island particularly towards the northwest um, up the chinese coast there along the east coast up to shanghai 26 degrees quite comfortably Sea surface temperatures show just how warm, anomalously warm it is in the South China Sea, more so than really any other region in the tropics. Uh, the eastern main development region of the Atlantic though, also very warm and that's perhaps why we're seeing such potent waves emerging, much like 92L. 
So many people have thought it might have formed by now, but here it is at the moment. You can see the area near the center of Invest 92L. Uh, this satellite imagery not quite the best, but you get the idea of what it's been doing recently. Slowly moving towards the west. Rotation is very broad, so you could be uh, under the impression that there isn't much of it, but there is quite a bit of rotation when you look at the long range imagery, um, especially on that wider view that we saw earlier. But looking at the cloud tops, um, still getting their act together. Not much organization around it yet, but it's looking better than it did yesterday when it had barely any convection at all. It is getting quite a bank of uh, significant cloud tops on the western side protruding out uh, well away from what would be this potential center so interesting to see what will happen with this if it does develop it will be a very disorganized sloppy storm uh, at least initially when it's moving through the lesser antilles here's what the models are saying uh, none of them now calling for hurricane status that wasn't the case a few days ago so the HWRF and the CTCX are the highest with borderline hurricane. Wind shear is not the problem because that's fairly low. That's probably why the models were developing it so much in the first place. Sea surface temperature is not a problem either. It's really the storm itself, the potential storm, and just how large it is and how slow it will be to intensify. The general track consensus there is fairly clear cut until at least Puerto Rico. On July 28th, 1982, we had three hurricane strength storms around the world. Typhoon Andy was making landfall in Taiwan as a Category 4, shortly after peaking as a Super Typhoon. Bess was on its way up to Super Typhoon status, and it would become the second storm, the, only the first storm to be retired twice in the Western Pacific, or indeed in any basin around the world. Elsewhere, Hurricane Gilma was headed towards the West Northwest, and would just pass south of the Hawaiian Islands, believe it or not. Well, the next name on the Atlantic hurricane list is Isaias, followed by Josephine in the Eastern Pacific. The next name on the list is Elida, followed by Fausto. In the Central Pacific, Iona is next after Hone on list one. In the Western Pacific, we're still looking out for Sinlaku. Will we go the whole month without a tropical cyclone in the Western Pacific? That will be the first time since 1886. In the North Indian Ocean, the next name is Gatti. And in the Southern Hemisphere, the next name in the Australian region is Imogen, followed by Joshua. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, Alicia, followed by Bongoyo. And in the South Pacific, Yolanda, followed by Zazu. That's all for now. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Check out our New Look Cyclone Tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash Force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month, You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.